I would like to give the floor to Mr. Daniel Funeriu, uh, currently EU high-level advisor to the Minister of Education of, of Moldova and member of the peer review team. The, actually, one of the recommendations from the report is that we need to embed more research and innovation into the general policy of economical development. So I think that smart specialization is quite relevant here. Bună ziua, hello. Uh, I will speak in English since we have an um, audience from uh, several countries. Now, before I start my actual speech, let me tell you that smart specialization really works. And I really don't understand why it took us so long to actually put words on something that really works. Look at Germany. 115 years ago, they started car industry. And you know what? They are really good at it. Uh, so they didn't try to copy the Italians to make pasta. Well, the Italians tried to copy the Germans to make cars, and they succeeded. There's one Ferrari or whatever, but not, you know, there's not 16% of the uh, Italian economy um, making cars. Um, if you look closer to Romania, um, after many, many years trying to be good at everything, they realized, you know, a hundred years after the Germans, that we could also make cars. Of course, we make Dacia, but we don't make Mercedes and BMW. But still, concentrating resources, it's a common sense thing, which unfortunately many times for political reasons, politicians don't really want to do. So it works, but now it's our, uh, it's our goal, it's our um, obligation as scientists and as people that usually try to think a bit more to push the politicians to go into this uh, direction. I will mention um, across the border in Romania another smart specialization concept that is starting to bear fruits. Maybe you heard about the uh, extreme light infrastructure, which is the most powerful laser in the world, which is being built near Bucharest. So there's going to be a whole smart specialization um, area built around this, um, around this laser. So to put it short, it's better to be good in one field than to be average in many, many other fields. It's just common sense. It's nothing really, uh, uh, you don't need Nobel Prize for this. So. Uh, what I'm going to briefly talk about is going to be uh, the research reform in Moldova, and there are going to be four points. One, I'll make a personal general consideration about reforms. Second, I will uh, talk about the peer review report that Mr. Porcescu mentioned about, uh, which established a diagnosis of the Moldovan research system, uh, which was followed by recommendations, and then I'll very briefly tell you what is the current state of play into all this research reform. Now, first about reforms, I really want to uh, stress three points. First, reform is a really badly perceived word. 27 years after the fall of communism, whenever you say reform, people run away from you. Because people got disappointed with reforms, people did not understand reforms, people did not see on a daily basis, or they had the impression that they did not see on the, ba on the daily basis an improvement of their lives. So essentially, reform east of Vienna is a word that is better not to use. Uh, to, be, to say it short, nobody votes you anymore just because you promise reforms. Saturation has been reached with this concept. Second point, uh, people talk about reforms in very complex terms. Now, real reform is really simple. Give money and power to the good people. Good people will know what to do with money, with resources, and with power. Bad politicians, poor scientists, will just waste money and will destroy institutions if they have power in these institutions. So it's simple. Identify who are the good guys, finance them, give them the power, and that's it. That is the best reform ever. Third point. There's a very huge confusion that I have noticed, again, east of Vienna. We had a tendency, and here I really parallel uh, what has been said before. We had a tendency to look westwards. How is the institutional design of Germany? How is the institutional design of America, of England? Let's copy the institutional design, and bingo, everything is going to work great. False. It doesn't work that way doesn't work that way because that institutional design in Germany or in France or in America has been built 
over 100 years, 200 years, by people who were very, very good at what they were doing in first place. So if you want to do a reform, don't play with institutions like, you know, there is this movie when uh, um, Hitler was losing the war and he was playing on the map with tanks that didn't exist. So don't play with the institution framework before you realize who the good guys are and who the good people are in your institutions and try to encourage them. So essentially, my, let's say, advice after trying to run huge reforms in education and research in Romania, some successful, some not, uh, focus on the people and the institution. Don't only focus on the institution. In other words, good people in a bad system will produce more results than bad people in a good system. Okay, now after these philosophical and personal remarks about reforms, what should be and what shouldn't be done about reforms, let me go to the point. So the research reform in Moldova, this I want to stress, is the result of a very thorough peer review of the Moldovan research and innovation system that was run under the Horizon 2020 policy support facility. These are the people that wrote the report and we would really like to, uh, as, as a former member of this team, I would really like to thank very much the Academy of Science of the Republic of Moldova who really was very supportive of all this and I hope that it will be just as supportive into the reform process that is starting right now. So, briefly, what is the diagnosis? How is the current system? First, low financing. 0.35% from the uh, um, overall output of the country in 2003. It raised in 2007 up to 0.6, only to decrease nowadays back to 0.35. But now, is it wise to spend money in a system that doesn't produce results? No. So, before you actually invest people's and taxpayers' money, you'd better have a system that works because otherwise you just dissipate resources. Second, a very big problem is aging, and this is related to uh, the less of attractivity of the job of a scientist's job. Third, obviously migration. Let me tell you that after 89, I'm a chemist. I was working in laboratories. Let me tell you that there were great Moldovan chemists that were filling the laboratories of Germany and France, especially in inorganic chemistry, because guess what? Salary, life conditions, career conditions. It's natural. Scientists move. Four, a weak link to society's needs and challenges. Now, it's logical since Moldova passed from a Soviet system where there was an order from Moscow, what everyone should be doing, to a system where there was no more order and everybody kept doing what they knew what to do, not what was necessarily uh, needed. Uh, another problem was insufficient, uh, sorry, was insufficient possibilities for universities to perform research. Traditionally, academy was designed to perform research, universities to teach. Now, these two roles have to need to come hand in hand, and unfortunately, even today, there's too, much, there's too little research capabilities in universities. And almost inexistent involvement of the private sector. Of course, IT is trying to catch up, but other fields in the industrial sector are not necessarily very strong. Some agriculture, but is not very strong. And also, last but not least, a rather unusual governance structure where the Academy of Science functions de facto as a ministry. Essentially, the Academy receives most of the funds and distributes them through procedures, which some are competitive, some are not, to uh, the institutions. So um, the Academy had a lot of uh, positive impact after 2004, but it's also the Academy that decided that there needs to be a change, and that's why they called you upon these experts. So with this diagnosis in hand, <coughs> with this diagnosis in hand, um, we also produced um, seven uh, recommendations, which I will briefly outline to you. I have another five minutes. Okay, so the seven recommendations. First, uh, be smart, smart specialization. Embed research and innovation policy into the overall economic strategy. Second, 
improve the governance of the national research and innovation system, in particular, create a dedicated ministerial responsibility. Know who is responsible for research at the ministerial level. Third, create an independent, transparent, and accountable research and innovation implementation agency. So essentially, create an agency which is responsible of distribu distributing the funds and try to distribute these funds in a competitive, transparent uh, manner. Fourth, redress the binary research and education system. In other words, try to merge the research activities which are happening mostly in the institutes of the, of the Academy of Science with the know-how in universities and try to develop the university's capacity to perform research. Five, safeguard the public research and innovation capacity of Moldova. Now, this is a very, very uh, polite way to say, uh, to, to say to corrupt politicians and to say to people that want valuable lands in Chisinau and so on, keep your hands off the infrastructure of research. Infrastructure of research is for research, it's not for you to build I don't know what and make money out of it. Yeah, this, unfortunately, I have this experience in Romania where a lot of institutes were spoiled of their assets just because corrupt politicians wanted to, you know, for land and whatever construction they wanted to do. Six, radically improve the employment and funding opportunities. Now, this is crucial. People do research. If you don't improve the life of people that do research, if you don't encourage them, they are not going to do research. It's just as simple. So human resources is key policy. And uh, there's an urgent need to review the framework for innovation in order to have a very coherent uh, uh, way to do that. I mean, it's not, and here, together with point one, smart specialization concept and this platform can really be a must. It's a must, basically. Now, I'm not sure, um, uh, I plan to go through each of one individually, but I think uh, I don't need to go into all these details because um, every single point speaks for itself. However, maybe just very briefly to um, um, mention a few key points and what I would like to focus on, it's clear why you need to improve the governance. Essentially, if it were up to me, the number one criteria for financing of an institution will be the ratio between researchers and administrative staff. The higher the ratio of researchers that publish results to administrative staff is, the most money I would give to that institutions. Uh, Romania and Moldova and countries east of Vienna are the only countries that I know where institutes directors have, I don't know how many secretaries, I don't know how many chauffeurs. Uh, I worked for a Nobel laureate in France, all my thesis, and guess what? He didn't have a chauffeur and he had only a part-time secretary because the money was used for, to do actual research. So. Uh, Improve the governance essentially means have more resources into actual research, into actual innovation, and dissipate less resources on blah, blah, on useless conferences, on uh, administration, and so on. Create an independent, transparent, and accountable agency. This is key. The government, of course, should write the policies, should say what should be done but then somebody has to implement it. And the key is to have such an agency with professional people. There are professional people in Moldova, I can tell you this. There are units that know how to run research, so the good people in these units should be encouraged. Moldova is one of the countries that best accesses Horizon 2020 from the Eastern Partnership. Congratulations, great. Take these people, use these people in this agency, but, is, but give them the freedom to run the competitions freely, transparently, and you know, run by foreign, uh, for example, by foreign experts that should evaluate grants, and so on. Uh, 
allow universities to do more research. Of course, this shall be commensurate. The, the encouragements that are given to universities should, should be commensurate with their building capacity. It's clear today do, they do not have the full capacity to use all the research money, but capacity needs to be built. Um, last point that I will develop is human resources. Now, to have good human resources, you need to do, at the same time, three things. I stress, at the same time, because if you don't do it at the same time, it's going to turn against you. You need to prepare the good people, have a correct selection way, and reward them. Train them, select them well, train them well, select them well, and reward them well. If you only reward them well, and if you don't have good, well-trained people and correctly selected people, you'll just end up using resources on people that do not perform. If you train them well, but you don't reward them well, they'll all run to Western Europe or to America. If you train them well, but you fill the position with your friends and with the friends of your friends, not with the good people, which we know it happens mainly east of Vienna, yeah, uh, then you will discourage the good people and the system will not win anything. So three things at the same time. Teach well, select well, and reward well. Now let me tell you briefly what is today's, today's as we speak, state of play. Now, um, there, 10 days ago, there was a meeting with the Prime Minister to, which, to whom was submitted a reform plan. And my personal optimism, I, I really have a genuine optimism because I could see commitment of the Prime Minister onto this reform. And I could see commitment at all levels from the, of, for the reforms. Starting with the Academy of Science, which is going to lose a lot of power, let's say things how they are. But I think the Academy did understand that they can they can focus much better on their activity as a research institution rather than wasting uh, energy into uh, uh, running activities that maybe uh, they can focus on something else. So I, did, I do have genuine optimism. So right now, there, we are in the final stages of writing an actual text based on the proposals. Now, of course, Everybody agrees on the principles, but everybody knows that the devil is in the details. But let me tell you this, you may trick some people, but you're not going to trick me. Yeah, I've been, I've been through this. Now, uh, of course, it's only natural that each institution attempts to conserve its influence. It's normal, it's a normal behavior, everybody has interests, and there's nothing wrong with having interests. I think people that have interests should be encouraged because they defend their interests, but they should have legitimate interests. What is bad is when somebody has illegitimate interests, but people that have legitimate interests, great, fantastic, give them power because they're going to defend their cake, and that's what they're supposed to do. So, of course, there's a very serious, uh, let's say, um, I shall not say struggle, but there's a very serious uh, discussion between Ministry of Economy, Ministry of Education, and I think everyone should have their role. The economy should have the role on innovation. Education should have the role on research, and I think that everybody can reach some sort of agreement, and we are very close to reaching such an agreement, um, such, let's say, interinstitutional agreement. The situation in Moldova, everybody knows, is complex. Laws need to be signed by the president. Uh, so there's the government, there are the ministries, there's the parliament that adopts the laws, there's the president that signs them into force. But let's say a good law, I'm sure everybody will push forward and it will end up being adopted. There's a very critical point uh, which I will like to stress. As I said, the Academy of Sciences right now has a very strong power in the system. The Academy asked rationally to shift this power towards the government, very good, but it's extremely important 
how this transition of power is going to happen. The academy has right now structures which are very performant into, for example, the Center for International Projects and other such structures which are very, very, which perform very well. And every single bit of knowledge and of capability should be used and should be transferred in a rhythm that will ensure a smooth transition. Again, we shall not fall into the trap of playing with institutions and now we have a fantastic institutional framework on the paper, but then in reality it doesn't work because some bad transition of power, some bad interinstitutional transitions, some people didn't like some other people, and so on. So very, very careful how this transition of system is going to happen. Last but not least, obviously the European Union is providing a lot of support. Financial support, knowledge support, uh, patience support, essentially support in any shape and form you can imagine. European Union wants Moldova to go great. We want that. But every support has its limits. And the European Union, I, I'm not a European Union, uh, let's say, representative, but I can see from the outside that uh, after an initial enthusiastic phase in the Eastern Partnership, which has produced results, now wants to see more results in order to give more support. And the more results that are going to be seen, the more support is going to be given. It's just as simple. For the good of the people of Moldova, for the good of the institutions of Moldova. Okay, I think I was a bit longer than I was supposed to be. Thank you very much. I hope you didn't get bored. I really think it can, uh, Moldova can move forward. Smart specialization is really key. And good luck. I'm here to help if it's needed. Thank you.